I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of King Ludwig's castles. This is part 6, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos. The links are in the description. I recommend watching them all to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Wikipedia states, Linderhof Palace, in German it's called Schloss Linderhof, is a schloss in Germany, in southwest Bavaria, near the village of Edel. It is the smallest of the three palaces built by King Ludwig II of Bavaria, and the only one which was actually completed, and that he lived in most of the time from 1876. Wow! Yet another residence, this kid Ludwig II built, and owned. Man of Miracles! Ludwig already knew the area around Linderhof from his youth when he had accompanied his father King Maximilian II of Bavaria on his hunting trips in the Bavarian Alps. When Ludwig II became king in 1864, he inherited a hunting lodge, the so-called Königshausen, King's Little House, from his father, and in 1869, began enlarging the building. In 1874, he decided to tear down the Königshausen and rebuild it in its present-day location in the park. At the same time, three new rooms in the staircase were added to the remaining U-shaped complex, and the previous wooden exterior was clad with stone facades. The building was designed in the style of the second Rococo period. And again, there was already something there before Ludwig tore it down and built the palace. First he enlarged the building, and then he tore it down, but three new rooms and a staircase were added to the remaining complex. This is a drawing again by George Dahlman from 1867, of what it was supposed to have looked like. Which is odd, because some of the buildings at Linderhof do actually have a Moorish or Islamic or Tartarian look. I'm not making this up. I borrowed these images directly from the Linderhof Palace Wikipedia page. The Moroccan House, image one, was supposedly taken from the International Exhibition in Vienna in 1873. The Moorish House, image two, was supposedly taken from the International Exhibition in Paris in 1867. That's right kids, Ludwig II transported entire buildings from the World Fair in another country to his place in Linderhof. Real buildings, not the supposed replicas they claim populated the World Fairs. Unfortunately, the Bavarian government doesn't provide a single photo of this previous building, the Hunting Lodge, on their website. They provide a drawing instead. German Wikipedia calls this hunting lodge the small castle that stood there, prior to the big castle. But I don't see any castle on this drawing, only houses and a chapel. A googling of construction photos Linderhof yielded no results. By now, is anyone surprised? When typing the same phrase in German, I got one single photograph. Again, single photos are meaningless. The one you see here, taken from Wikimedia Commons, is especially meaningless because it could have been taken anywhere. There are no identifiable landmarks that connect it to Lindehof. The mountain range in the background doesn't look like the one I remember. I've been to the palace in person twice. Where's the proof of construction, folks? Construction supposedly occurred between 1870 and 1886. That's 16 years of no photographic proof. Checking the newspaper archives for the search term, Linderhof, I was surprised to find it mentioned as far back as 1937, but not as a palace, rather as a hotel on a hunting ground. Wow, are the tour guides finally getting something right, for once? Of course this doesn't preclude my theory that the palace was excavated from under the mud, just like the other castles. This newspaper article from the area, dated November 5th, 1856, was interesting. This, written in old German letters, says that His Majesty the King will visit Lindehof, and right after that, go hunting in the area Hohenschwangau. Another newspaper entry 12 years earlier says that the King and his people will go hunting at Lindehof. In fact, all the old newspaper entries mark Lindehof only in the context of royalty visiting. Does this prove anything? No, but it certainly raises eyebrows. For the entire year 1870, I found more than a dozen articles about Lindehof, but none of them mentioned that construction had commenced. In 1871, I found a curious classified ad from the newspaper, New S. Nackerton, 
latest news, published in Munich, May 20th. The German text says, Tuck de Jerdarbeiter find in sog like best of Tigung and Linderhof Bayetl. Wait till we translate what it means. It's my best piece of evidence for what I've been saying in this video. Here's the dictionary translation for the German word Erdarbeiter. Erdarbeiter means excavator. So, the text reads, Competent excavators can get immediate employment at Linderhof near Edel. I combed through 1870 and 1871 newspapers and found zero ads looking for construction workers, architects, or decorators, but found one ad looking for diggers. I'm always excited to find something that I intuitively felt was there, but hadn't found. Linderhof near Edel. Edel is the ancient monastery we looked at previously. It's only a short drive from the palace. Here's Linderhof from above. This is Edel Abbey. If you draw a straight line from the center pathway of the abbey across the map, you reach both Linderhof and Nischwanstein. At least it's what I thought while tinkering on Google Earth. I could go on researching for a while, and I'd no doubt dig up more. But I've already spent five full working days on these videos, so I'll give it a rest now. Now let me ask you again, how credible is the official narrative? How likely is it that these castles were there much longer? Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide. Now it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.